He wants to have them amputated. He wanted to have them amputated because only then would he feel like he had a complete body. And so he found a way to self to self inflict wounds that was so dangerous that he had to have an amputation. And he felt finally settled. Now, why I wanted to start on this is I wanted to destabilize all our notions of the integrity of the body. Mm -hmm. And by using a, an example that isn't familiar to help people to reflect on the fact that they get out of bed in the morning and they begin the, and they're already thinking there's something wrong with me, I mustn't eat today, I must do this, I must do that. What is that whole preoccupation that we've created so that our bodies are no longer a place we live from, but something that we feel we have to transform? And how can we think about the body really as not a bit of DNA that just unfolds, but as a body made in a particular cultural field, mm. In you, a particular family, and with Andrew, what was interesting was is say, you can't blame Andrew on Cla on on L'Oreal. What was interesting about Andrew was, and it was in a kind of pre-visual culture moment, but um, polio and the polio vaccine were very present at that particular moment in history, and one can speculate that what interested him. And what magnetized him about limblessness was a copy of Life magazine, which showed these polio victims in dramatic and in heart-engaging ways. Mm -hmm. And that he had an, a school teacher and he had an aunt who were also polio victims. So there's some notion, obviously, the psychoanalyst would have, which is that this this form of identification would provide him with some something that he wasn't getting within his family of origin. Mm -hmm. If he could be what would appear to be disabled, then he would be understood in a different kind of way. So that story, just one of the many in your book that destabilizes our idea of a normal body and mm -hmm. people's normal relationships, um, you're not saying it's okay. It, you're not saying this should be... Um, just accepted. You are saying that there's a problem. Oh, I'm saying there's then, a very, very big problem. <laughs> I mean, we are really in trouble. You actually call it a public health crisis. Oh, Why? I think it's a public health emergency. I think it's a public health crisis. We have governments, mine and yours, focusing on the problem of obesity, mm. right? Do we have them focusing on the problem of so many, literally millions of people walking around the world in the West? We'll come to the other countries mm -hmm. in a minute who are, have such disturbed relationships to their bodies, but it doesn't show up in a statistic. It doesn't show up in um, an eating problem, although they, they have an eating problem. It, it, show, it may show up if you look at it in the cosmetic surgery statistics. That's an industry that's growing at a billion a year, from 14 to 15 billion in 2006, 2007. It may show up in the stat that shows that 70% of girls of 18 don't feel okay about doing ordinary activities because they feel so awful about their bodies. Mm. But these are hidden problems, and those are the problems that we need to address rather than this particular uh, vehicle, obesity, which I think is there's a lot of money to be made from making it a disease entity. So you're really suggesting it's the wrong thing to be focusing on. Absolutely. It's not to say it's not a problem, but it isn't the problem. Mm. The, the problem is our children not being introduced to their bodies as a place to expand and run and jump and enjoy but they are learning to mimic the adults around them because that's how children learn. And to enter into a sense that bodies are somehow dangerous, that, that fretting is what you do, and transforming them is a goal, and that's how you become an adult. Mm. We are having in this country a coincidence of factors. One is the decline of sports, really, in public schools, dance, theater, sports, physical activity. There's just no budget for most of it unless you get to the very competitive levels, with this tremendous commercialization of young people getting younger and younger and younger or, all or the time. Or people of my age getting younger and younger <laughs> and younger all the time. I mean, exactly. that's, that's what I find absolutely remarkable, is that we've fetishized youth, haven't mm -hmm, we? Mm -hmm. um, and yes, the conjunction around sports is interesting, but on the other hand, compulsive sports, of course, is another way of, if you like, attempting to be inside a body or get some body stuff that you can't accept in a natural way because mm. whole, all our notions about the body are so fraught or, or distorted. Hence the, um, the, the drug crisis within the, the sports industry and the whole question of doping and all the rest of it. People feel like they have to perform in a sort of superhuman way and how are they going to do it? Now, coming back to sort of the feminist project, there might be somebody out there who says, well, feminists gained something. Now men have this problem, too. Yeah, I don't look at it that way. No, I really don't. I, I remember 20 years ago when Cosmopolitan 
uh, when men's magazines were looking just like Cosmopolitan, they were being feminized, and men were being offered, and this was at the point at which men no longer had jobs for life. It was the whole restructuring of the economy 20, 25 years ago. And I thought, oh, God, men are being offered the same rotten solutions to distress as women. Now, with women, I think the whole thing has shifted again, which is this isn't the feminism that I think I fought for at all, all my generation, but the kind of notion of superwoman with girls having a checklist of accomplishments. And at the same time, you know, they've been to this college, they've got this, they've got this, this, this. At the same time, they have to, baby, look really hot. And that seems to be an absolute prerequisite for their engagement. So it's as though you've had this message that, okay, you can take up space in the world, women. All right, we'll let you, we'll let you in. But actually...